Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. There's this common trend that's been becoming more and more common recently among more and more companies where you will purchase something that has a certain set of features advertised and they will take those features away after you have purchased the product. It's a bait and switch. And the reason this bait and switch is able to occur is because more and more products that we purchase nowadays require that you connect to that company's servers in order to get full functionality of the product. Some of the features that are advertised are going to say, use this app that connects to our server. And as long as it connects to their server, they can take that away at any given time. That is the direction that the world has been going in. And the unfortunate reality of this is companies are slowly starting to try to stick the tip in and see how much they can get away with without your consent. I discussed this in this video, Arlo cameras take the L with disposable junk, where I was going over the fact that this camera was advertising that you would get cloud storage that you could use to view certain events that would occur. So if some sort of event would occur on the camera, you could log in and check the cloud storage to see what was going on. And they no longer allowed you to do that unless you paid them a subscription in spite of what it said on the marketing on the box of the effing product. What made it particularly disgusting here is that you could not change it over to use your own server. So if, you know, they didn't want to pay hosting for this anymore for this expensive product, fine. You can't use the server that's in your closet because you're not allowed to adjust it. Funny how that works. And it looks like Ring is doing something very similar here. I like to read a customer email. I like to read an article that was going over this, and I would like to demonstrate what's actually going on in reality. Hi, Lewis. For your information, another nail in the coffins of you will own nothing and like it. My girlfriend woke up to her ring alarm sounding due to her cats. She had the cameras turned off with the ring app the night before. The app updated overnight. Now she must pay $10 per month to get back the ability to turn on and off the cameras from the app. She cannot recall getting any notification. I looked and there was an article on The Verge I found this morning that said it was going to happen. So the camera is now always on unless you remove the batteries as we haven't figured out how to do it otherwise. So here we have the problem that stuff that we bought and paid for had its functionality taken away and held for ransom. I imagine this will be happening to other things as well. It is not just having to pay to activate hardware you already own like car seat heaters, but they can also do bait and switch later. And this is a problem. Now, when you read the Verge article, it says on March 29th, all new users of the Ring Alarm security system will have to pay for basic features. New users. But again, that is not the way this is working out in reality. This gentleman's girlfriend had the app update without her wanting it to update. And now magically those features have disappeared for somebody who was already a user of the app, not a new user, an existing user. And when you look at the Reddit thread that's associated with this, you will see many people saying something like this. They lied. I've had my system since 2020, and my app now says that I need to subscribe to keep using all the features. Good job, Amazon. Good job. And this demonstrates a fundamental point. If any product, if anything that you purchase that you think you own connects to a company server, you do not actually own it. In fact, they own you. If the features and functionality are dependent on it connecting to an external server and you cannot self-host or self-manage your own instance of that particular product, you do not own it. You have no rights over it and they can turn it off and screw you at any given time and they will get away with it because consumer protection in the United States is a laughing stock and a joke. Even when Biden gave the FTC broad carte blanche to be able to go after right to repair, they did literally nothing. And you can listen to more about that in this video that I will link down below as FTC management demoralizing staff out of effective antitrust enforcement. These companies will not even get a slap on the wrist for doing this, much less actually get in trouble. So why not keep sticking the tip in? Why not keep pushing? Why not keep sticking the tip in and seeing how much you could abuse your customers if the government is not going to do anything and you have the power over your customers to do it. At the new organization that I work for, FUTO, we have some fellowship programs and grants programs that are designed for people who are trying to create software that follows a basic set of principles. And one of those is that you can self-manage or self-host your own instance, meaning that if a company like Arlo says, you are no longer allowed to use storage without paying us, you can set up your own self-hosted, self-managed instance that runs on a server in your closet so you don't have to deal with them. If Ring decides that they are magically going to take functionality away that you already paid for, you don't have to care because you could tell your Ring camera, doorbell alarm, whatever, don't connect to Amazon servers, connect to the server that is running in my closet. As long as this feature and functionality does not exist, and as long as we normalize not being able to self-manage or self-host your own instance on the things that you purchase, you don't actually own them. And the mistakes are always gonna be one-sided. They're always gonna be in one direction because it's funny how this works. I never see a company saying, we are gonna give you more features, more functionality, more ability to do something with our products over time. 
It always happens. These mistakes always seem to happen in one direction. It's funny how that always works. It reminds me of a parking garage I had to use yesterday. Anybody ever use some, some garbage here called ParkWiz? There are some parking garages that use ParkWiz. And one of the problems with it is when you input your license plate, your state, your credit card, and your email, when you hit submit, it'll say an error has occurred. Please read help. When you read help, it'll say, oh, you may have typoed it. Please type it in again. So you type it in again and it doesn't work. And then you, okay, let me, let me try a different credit card. So you try a different credit card, doesn't work. Okay, maybe I typo, let me try it again. And then I notice like 10 minutes later, I have five or eight emails from all the parking transactions that I just paid for because in spite of the fact that it said error not accepted, you actually did accept my transaction. And then when you contact them, they're like, which parking pass did you use? And it's like, what do you mean? You, you, don't, you don't get a ticket cancel all transactions besides one and then they ghost you and stop responding now the funny thing is that glitch has existed for over a year because the same thing happened to me last year at the same place why fix it seriously why like why fix it why try to fix these one-sided problems that always just so happen to result in the manufacturer or the parking garage or whoever else getting more money especially if you can probably get away with it. Now, I'm going to be pedantic and I'm going to call my credit card company and wait for 30 minutes on the phone because Chase sucks and doesn't let you do chargebacks properly via their website. It'll always tell you to call for 99% of the reasons. I'm actually that pedantic that to get four effing dollars back, I will waste a half hour of my time. But how many people don't? How many people just lie down and take it? How many people accept the abuse? As long as we accept the abuse, this will continue happening. And what needs to happen in these types of cases is everybody who purchased one of these devices needs to be willing, open, and honest about the fact that it's time for them to cut their losses, rip that crap out of the side of their house, and toss it in e-waste. Because if you don't own it, if they can take functionality that they advertised existing and take it away after the point of sale, after you have purchased it, you don't own it, and they can't be able to get away with that. We cannot set a precedent that what they have done here is okay. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.